Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to continue talking about business and FOSS. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about creating for yourself a separate computer for your business. Now, in this case here, I have some extra computers laying around, but nothing that I can actually wipe and set aside for that particular business. But I also could say, you know what, maybe I'll just create a user account on a separate computer. That could be an option as well. But another option that I do like is we're going to use an external USB drive and we're going to install an operating system on that. It's the same thing that I do for banking. It's encrypted, it's safe. I don't want to lose it. If you're going to use this option, you need a good backup strategy to make sure you're not losing files and things like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you how to use virtual machine to install Linux on a separate USB drive so that you don't need to take your hard drive out. You're not going to risk damaging your current operating system. The only requirements here is you need to make sure you have a USB 3 flash drive or a USB 3 external hard drive. You're going to need a computer that can easily run a virtual machine. Now in this case what we're going to do is we are going to install this to a USB drive so that I can then boot this off of any computer. If I'm in the office I might use this big beefy computer. If I'm on the road I'll use my current Dell which is a Linux Mint um, computer right now. So but I do want to keep it separate from this particular operating system here. So let's go ahead and walk through the various steps we're going to do. So we're going to use virtual machine. And the first thing you need to do is make sure that you go under your preferences and extensions and make sure that you have the extensions pack enabled. You're going to need this to be able to have USB 3 support inside of your virtual machine. So let's go ahead and create a new machine and we're going to go ahead and call this guy USB install and ew, Windows we're gonna use Linux instead and uh, I'm going to use Linux Mint 19.3 I don't like booting into brand new versions so I'm not gonna use Linux Mint 20 here and uh, 19.3 is very mature and still has a few years of support left so we're gonna go ahead and use that one which is Ubuntu base I'm going to change my memory up to 6 gigs of RAM, and we do not want to create a hard drive. Go ahead and hit Create, and there's always going to be some more settings we want to change. Go into Systems, Processor, I'm going to give this guy 4 CPU cores, and then under Display, enable 3D acceleration, and max out the video memory. You can go as high as 256 if you run a, a command in the terminal. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use that. I, we just need it for installing anyway. No big deal there. Next thing you need to do is you need to go down to USB and enable USB 3 support. This is going to make, make sure that your system actually installs correctly. And then we're going to add a filter, which anytime our USB stick is plugged into this particular machine, it's going to auto mount. And that way, there's no question about whether the disk is actually mounted to the drive or not. So with that done, notice that there is no hard drive, but we do have our optical drive. Now we're going to go ahead and find our disk image. So like I said, I'm going to use Linux Mint 19.3 for this. So I do have a 20 available, but I think 19 is going to be a more mature, more stable system right now. I was thinking about using Linux Mint Debian Edition 4, but I was actually having issues with booting the Debian system on an external hard drive for some reason. Never encountered that, but whatever that happens to be. Maybe it's the fact I was trying to encrypt it, so we'll see what happens on this one here. And I do want this encrypted. So let's go ahead and set that guy up, boot up our machine, and then we're going to... Uh, boot this guy back up full screen and uh, you might have heard the little beep that was the USB drive automatically mounting to the virtual machine because that filter is turned on on VirtualBox so this drive when it's plugged into the master um, the host computer it's always going to automatically mount itself into the guest so let's go ahead and let this guy boot up and then we will proceed through our install all right, so I already went ahead and formatted the, the drive. I call that OWIC Pub, which is the name of the particular business we are creating a computer for. 
And uh, if you're running the Debian type systems, you might need to format it to ext4 to get it to not fail. Since we're using the Ubuntu based version, we won't have any issues because this installer is actually really good. So we'll kind of walk through all of our various settings, continue there. US English keyboard layouts is just fine. And then I do want to enable third party software for graphics, Wi Fi drivers, and things like that. And then we'll go ahead and click through next. And then it's going to be downloading some things. So it'll take a moment to get into the next screen there. Okay, so it says unmounted partitions are in use. Do you want the installer to unmount the partitions? If you leave them mounted, you will not be able to create, delete, or resize. So the answer is yes, we want to unmount these partitions. So you can see that that kicked off the USB drive that was there. We can erase disk and install Linux Mint. And then we can encrypt the new installation for security. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and hit next. We need to choose a security key. So since this is um, a production system, I'm going to do a complicated key. So this is actually encryption onto the, uh, onto the whole disk, full disk encryption. And then we're still going to have a separate login password as well. So go ahead and hit install now. And then it's going to walk through the rest of the installation process. So we'll give it just a second here. All right, so changes are going to be made to the disk. That's perfectly fine. This disk was just purchased for this particular use. New York time is good. Go ahead and give it the name of the business there. I don't need the dash virtual box. And then this is not a test machine. So we're going to give it a password that's definitely more complicated than my super secret password that is definitely not. One, two, three. So I don't need to encrypt my home folder in this case because the whole disk is encrypted. Go ahead and let it do its final thing. And then we should be good with Linux Mint once it's done. All right, so it says here we're done. So we're not gonna go ahead and restart now because it's not gonna be able to restart into the USB drive that we did. So we're just gonna hit the continue testing, shut the system down, and then we'll kind of walk through the next steps how to boot this guy up. All right, so here's my little USB drive that contains the operating system for the business. Now, again, if you are using this methodology, make sure you have a good solid backup strategy. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna find the high-speed USB port on this computer, which is on the left side of this one here. You wanna look around for it, either by the color or by the SS notification on it, des designation. We're gonna boot the computer up and boot into the boot menu. And uh, this computer, that's F12. Some of your computers might be F9 or um, it might be F9 or F11. Just you'll have to check your computer and play around with the BIOS to figure out where that boot menu is. So now when I boot into this guy here, I have the second option under the top there it says USB storage device. And if I go ahead and hit enter on that, then it should be booting into our new Linux Mint build. So let's see if I can get that logo up there. It'll be just a second. And there we have the new Linux Mint logo and it's asking us for a login. This is because the entire disk is encrypted. If you were to drop this guy into a computer, the entire thing is encrypted. So I'm gonna go ahead and decrypt it. Okay, so you enter the password. It tells us it is uh, the crypt, uh, crypt setup has been successful. So that tells me that it is now going to boot up into the operating system and it's going to land on a login screen where I enter my password to get logged in. And now I have my brand new Linux Mint 19.3 install. So be just a second to land on the desktop. There we have it. So now we're fresh out of the box. So now this computer, anytime I plug it into whether this computer or my main computer or any other computer, I can boot into this system, I can log in, I can take care of all my business stuff, I can even throw this USB drive on a keychain and carry my business computer around with me. So there are positives and negatives of that. Of course, a big negative, if you're carrying around a lot like that, you want to have solid backup strategies. In this case, a lot of our business is gonna be on some open source cloud infrastructure that I have set up and I've been working on. And so a lot of what's gonna be there is going to be fairly safe from being lost. This is basically a repository, a workstation to work on it. 
but the total overall cost, it didn't have to buy a whole new computer for this. All I did is I bought a new $10, 64 gig flash drive, and that's going to be more than sufficient for what we're doing with this business right now. So with that, that is how you can use an external hard drive or an external USB flash drive to build an entire operating system with free and open source software on an existing computer that you have without ruining anything on that computer. So I can pull this drive out and this computer will always boot up as it always has. But now we have a complete separation and everything on there is going to be encrypted. So that is a power of using Linux for your small business. Let me know the other business questions about free and open source software that you have and those can make their way into our series on FOSS Business Design. Thanks for coming along. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.